A biconditional is when a conditional and its converse are true. You can combine them to make one statement. The statement is called a biconditional. You can write a biconditional concisely with the phrase if and only if. So I'm going to take if three points are collinear, then they lie on the same line. This is a true statement. So now I'm going to write its converse. Okay, so I wrote the converse. If three points lie on the same line, then they are collinear. Notice how I didn't say if they are on the same line, then the three points are collinear. Remember, you want to start the sentence with describing what you're talking about instead of starting with a they or a it or a she or a object. You want to say what it is. So um, this is also true. So since the original statement, which is the conditional, is true, and the converse is true, so the first statement's true, the converse is true, I can write it as a biconditional. So to write it as a biconditional, you take the hypothesis, and you write three points are collinear, And then you write if and only if. If and only if, it means that you can go backwards too. If and only if, and then you take the conclusion. They lie on the same line. They lie on the same line. So the biconditional means that you can read the original statement the conditional statement and the converse are both true, so you can combine them in one sentence. Okay, write two statements that form this biconditional about integers greater than 1. A number is prime if and only if it has only two distinct factors, one in itself. So this is the hypothesis. And this is a conclusion. So to write two statements, I can use if the hypothesis, then the conclusion. And then I can write if the conclusion, then the hypothesis. So I'm going to write both of those out. Below here, on the top part, I wrote the first statement. If a number is prime, then... It has only two distinct factors, one in itself. And then I wrote it the other way. If a number has only two distinct factors, one in itself, then the number is prime. So again, make sure you say start out with if the number instead of saying if it only has two distinct factors. So that's how you take a biconditional and you write it into two conditionals. You, you write down what the underline what the hypothesis is, underline what the conclusion is, Write an if-then statement, if hypothesis, then conclusion, and then go backwards, if conclusion, then hypothesis. Okay, number two, consider this true conditional. Write its converse. If the converse is true, combine the statements as a biconditional. So if x equals 5, then x plus 15 equals 20. The statement is true. Now I'm going to write the converse. So the converse is switch the hypothesis and conclusion. So if x plus 15 equals 20, then x equals 5. So if you subtract 15 from each side, you get x equals 5. So this the con converse is true. So if the conditional is true, and the converse is true, we can write it as a biconditional. So when writing it as a biconditional, take the hypothesis, so x equals 5, and insert an if and only if in between, and then write the conclusion, x plus 15 equals 20.
Write the two statements that form this biconditional. Lines are skew if and only if they are non coplanar. So the first part is the hypothesis or the conclusion, really, because remember we can flip flop them if they're, it's a biconditional, and they are non coplanar. So I'm going to start out by saying if the hypothesis, then the conclusion. So I wrote both of them out. If lines are skew, then they are non-coplanar. If lines are co non-coplanar, then they are skew. So remember to start out if lines, not if they. Number four, consider this true conditional. Write its converse. If the converse is true, combine the statements as a biconditional. So I need to change this statement and do a converse. So I'm first I'm going to write the statement as a conditional. I think that might be easier to understand. Okay, so I wrote out, if a person is a resident of Lansing, I wanted to specify that it was a person, then they live in Michigan. Okay, we are going to assume that if the person is a resident of Lansing, we're talking about the Lansing in Michigan, not the Lansing in Illinois, Indiana. There's other Lansings. So we're already given that this is true. Now we have to figure out if the converse is true. If a person is a resident of Michigan, then they live in Lansing. That is not true. That's false. A counterexample would be Detroit, Grand Rapids. So um, we can't write this as a biconditional because both statements, the conditional and the converse, have to be true. Second part of the lesson is about writing a good definition. There's a lot of definitions in geometry. So what makes a good definition? A good definition uses clearly understa understood terms. So there's nothing vague about it. Um, it's precise. So it's specific. Avoid, you know, using complicated words to describe something. And it's reverse. It's reversible. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can, basically if it says it's reversible, it means that you can write it as a biconditional. So let's look at the first one. The definition of perpendicular is perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form right angles. So I'm going to write the, I'm going to write the conditional for it. Okay, I wrote the, both the conditional and the converse. So if lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form right angles. Converse, if lines intersect to form right angles, then they are perpendicular. So I can put both of these together. Lines are perpendicular is going to be my hypothesis. They intersect to form right angles is going to be my conclusion. So I'm going to write, to write it as a biconditional, it should be an I in there, to write it as a biconditional, you write the hypothesis, then write if and only if, and then the conclusion. So I'm going to write it right now. Okay, so I took the hypothesis, lines are perpendicular, and I wrote if and only if in between the conclusion. They intersect to form right angles. This is, a def this is an example of a good definition because you can write it as a biconditional. So when you're writing... A definition or if you're determining whether a definition is good or not see if it's a can be written as a biconditional statement so we're going to look at these and see if they're good definitions so a triangle has sharp corners so if the object is a triangle if and only if it has sharp corners so if it is a triangle then it has sharp corners if it has sharp corners then it is a triangle. So this is not a good definition because there are other things that have sharp corners. So other objects have sharp corners. And sharp corners is kind of vague. What are we talking about here? So corners that hurt you? It doesn't really make sense. B. An airplane is a vehicle that flies. So if the vehicle is an airplane then it flies if the vehicle flies then it is an airplane there are other vehicles that fly 
there is a helicopter. Helicopters fly, so it's not, you can't write it as a biconditional statement. C. The midpoint of a line segment is the point that divides the segment into two congruent segments. Okay, it seems pretty specific. So, the midpoint, if the midpoint, or if the, let's see, how can we write this? this if the point is the midpoint of a line segment, then it is a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. That works. Now I'm going to go backwards. If the point divides a segment into two congruent segments, so if a point divides a segment into two congruent segments, then it is the midpoint of a line segment. That's good. This is a good definition. It's reversible. You can write it as a biconditional because both the conditional and the converse are true. In the last part, a line segment is part of a line. So if it is a line segment, then it is part of a line. If it is part of a line, then it is a line segment. Part of a line. So if you have a line, you could have a segment. This green is part of a line. But this black is also part of a line. This black part is a ray, so therefore it's not a good definition because a ray is also part of a line.